So there are different ways that you can implement scrolling in a game, but probably the most powerful and the best way of thinking about scrolling is to think of a camera. So over here, uh, we'll say the position of the camera moves with the player here, but notice not always because when we get to the edge of the screen, the camera is not going to go and reveal the part of the level that doesn't exist. So if we go over here, you can see I have a map which covers a wide area uh, and I'm making sure that the camera doesn't go outside that area. But for the most part, this camera is following the player. So the camera shows uh, what part of the world is actually appearing on the screen. Okay, the first thing to think about with the camera is that uh, we initiate, uh, initialize the camera. I've made an init camera function here, which gets called in init in main. And it just has an X and a Y position of zero. So it starts in the middle of the world. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to start in the middle of the world. Um, and in fact, this camera, every update uh, frame 60 times a second is going to just be moved, snapped to the player position. Uh, so this is kind of irrelevant what this is set to at the start here. Um, now, when you're doing a camera, almost everything can be put in a camera file. But the one thing you have to keep in mind is everything else that you draw in the world has to be have the camera position subtracted from it. So let's go and see what that means. If I go and draw the player down here, I don't draw the player simply add player.x and player.y, I draw it add player.x minus camera.x and player.y minus camera.y. And if I draw the, uh, the world, uh, well, which is, in the same file here I have uh, in main um, so I don't have a separate world file um, this would be um, drawn at zero normally um, so the world is being drawn at zero minus camera dot x or just negative camera dot x and zero minus camera dot y so you might say why would we draw the world at uh, negative camera dot x for example. Well just think about it for a minute here. Um, if I move the bird here and thus the camera, if I move it um, let's say a hundred pixels over to the right, uh, if I move to the right in the positive direction, can you see that the the world actually gets drawn uh, the opposite direction in the negative direction? So I'll do that again. So here I'm moving the camera a hundred pixels to the right and the way that that gets realized is the world gets drawn 100 pixels to the left. And that's why we always have to have uh, subtract the camera from whatever you're drawing on the screen. OK, now in this particular case, um, that for the player, those two things, um, having the player subtracted from the camera and snapping the camera to the player, that means that the player looks like most of the time it doesn't move. Um, except for out by the edge, which I will explain now. So what's happening at the edge here, if I go back into the to the camera um, file, is that every frame, we're also just checking for level limits, okay? Now, uh, I've worked out with a bit of trial and error that if, uh, if I let the camera go more than to a greater position than negative 334, I start to see the empty area outside the level, which doesn't good, look good. So I've uh, snapped it to that. Now you can do that with trial and error using this clamp function, uh, which is available. Uh, just a reminder, if you go to explore in the uh, games frog library here, you can just import it or just find the clamp function. Um, but if I use that clamp function and I snap both camera dot, clamp both camera dot X and camera dot Y within these bounds, uh, it will stop the camera from uh, sh revealing world that doesn't exist. Um, so you can do this trial and error or you could work it out mathematically. So for example, um, if the total width of the, uh, of the world here is 1024, um, pixels. So half of that would be 512. Uh, so if, if I go back to the camera here, uh, 512, I'll just get my calculator. Um, oops, I'll get my calculator to make sure this is roughly correct. So 512 is half the width of uh, the world. And but I've got to remember that the camera can only get within 178 of it here. Otherwise, 
the edge will start to show because it's 178 from the middle to the edge here. So minus 178 and we get 334. So that's the limit that I've worked out mathematically, but you could also do that trial and error. So that's the basic idea of how you do a simple camera. I'll probably include uh, an example below of how to do a much more complex camera. Uh, but please, I really suggest that you implement this camera first, get it working. And really, this will probably be all that you need for your game.